Hi everyone, Shauna here from Karuna Yoga Wellness. Welcome, we do have a short little practice for you today focusing on the shoulder, the neck, so the area at the upper torso where we tend to hold a lot of tension. Now this is going to be a seated sequence but I will preface this by saying that you can do this in a chair if it's a little bit easier for you. So if you're really tight in the hips, if sitting down cross-legged on the floor is a bit of a struggle, then by all means please grab a chair place that down and I will go through the different variations and different options um, for whichever one suits you. So either with our chair or sitting on the mat, we're just going to come to a comfortable seated position. And if you are coming down on the ground or if you do want to challenge yourself, you can grab yourself a bolster if you have one, a pillow or what I've got here, which hopefully you've all got handy or can have handy, is a rolled towel, which works really well. You can place that underneath your sit bones. And it just gives you a little bit of extra height, a little bit more space here through the hips. So sitting up nice and tall. And before we get underway, I will say as well that if you're new to yoga, it's been a long time between practices or you're coming back from an injury, as with anything that's new to your body, it's always best to get medical approval or to go to your physio and double check before you try anything new. But we love new people coming to yoga, so that shouldn't put you off. It's just really important to get that check done if need be, and also to make sure you're listening to your body. So some of us, it might have just been a couple of weeks without practicing, perhaps, if we're a little out of our usual routine. So tune into yourself, check in with your body, and if anything feels wrong, please come out of it. Please drop a comment on the video if you need a hand with anything. But like I said, today we're going to be going through neck, shoulders, upper, upper half of the torso. Um, we hold a lot of tension here, especially if we're stressed out. You might notice in a particularly stressful day at work that the shoulders start to creep up towards your ears. So we're really going to be working to release some of the tension there. Uh, for those of us that work at computers a lot as well, uh, we don't often release through the top of our shoulders, even though we tend to sit with some pretty bad posture. I'm talking about myself here, of course, um, but I'm sure I'm not alone in that. So either on our chair, on our mat, making sure we're pretty comfortable here because we are going to start here and spend a few minutes just checking in with our bodies and coming sort of into our practice. So closing the eyes down wherever you are now. And I know that this can sometimes feel a little bit weird, especially if you're new to yoga, you might be like, what the hell? Why are we closing the eyes down? Well, there's a couple of good reasons that we do this. One is obviously it does reduce distraction. It brings our focus in. But it also allows us to shut off our external senses. So we rely on these quite heavily. And there's so much going on in the outside world that it can become really difficult to listen to your body, to notice the signals it's sending to you. And that's one of the many important reasons why we practice yoga. It's that opportunity to come inwards, to have a little bit of a break from what can sometimes be the mayhem and madness of the outside world. So starting to bring that focus in a little bit more now. Checking in with yourself. So how are you feeling today? It might become immediately apparent that there's areas of tension calling out to you, that perhaps you have an abundance of energy or maybe you're feeling a little bit flat. So first noticing these signals, these feelings, We're going to start to bring our attention to our breath. This is the source of our prana, our life force. 
And it's something we do all the time, but we often take for granted. Just noticing how we're breathing. If it's available to us, we're going to take both the in and exhale through the nose. Just starting to deepen that breath now. Starting to expand the lungs a little bit further with every inhale we take. And start to take the breath into the belly. And again, just like closing the eyes, this can feel super foreign. Not many of us stick our belly out with each breath we take. So if this is something you struggle with slightly, then you can place one hand gently on your stomach and one hand on your chest, just nice and lightly. Keeping the eyes closed still as we inhale, we feel the chest start to lift, and the stomach start to gently push out. We exhale to release as much air as we can without forcing the breath. Just taking a few more belly breaths like this. And as we do this, just noticing some of the more subtle signals, sensations that arise in the body. We're going to find a natural rhythm with this breathing now, so still taking breath into belly, but perhaps not forcing it quite so much. And you're going to exhale to blink the eyes open, place the hands back down on your knees. I'm going to take an inhale, reaching the arms wide, looking up to the palms as they meet overhead. And we're going to exhale our hands to Anjali Mudra, so to heart center, the palms together, the elbows come out nice and wide. And once they've met here in the center of our chest, we're going to inhale, roll those shoulders away from our ears. And exhale, allow them to rest down our back, keeping the elbows wide, gentle pressure between the palms. We use Anjali Mudra quite a lot throughout our yoga practice. What this does is this actually connects us to our heart space. It also connects the right and the left side of the brain, which can help us to feel a little bit more switched on, a little bit more energized. Taking a couple more deep breaths here. And our next inhale, we're going to sweep those arms up, bring the palms to meet overhead again. And as we exhale, we're going to fold from the hips. So placing the hands down in front of us. If you're on a chair, you can just fold yourself over your thighs. Let the arms dangle down over the knees. Just taking a couple of breaths here. If you're seated on the mat, let's really make sure we're grounding down through the sit bones. Creep those fingertips a little bit further away from us. On our next inhale, we're going to creep the hands in towards our body so rolling ourselves up placing hands on knees and exhale just to sit back nice and tall we're going to inhale bring the shoulders up towards our ears and then exhale them down the spine nice and slowly inhale rising up with the shoulders and exhale down we'll take one more in this direction 
then let's reverse the direction of these circles. So inhale, reaching up. Exhale, releasing them down. Taking two more big shoulder rolls here. Then we're going to inhale, sitting up nice and tall again. We're going to exhale, draw our navel in towards our spine. So bringing our core in, switching our Uddiyana Bandha on. We're going to come into a seated cat cow. So again, this is the same whether you're on a chair or on the mat. The hands are on the knees and we inhale, lifting our chest, lifting our gaze. The shoulders are back, so there's space across our heart center here. We exhale with that core engaged. We're going to round through. Bring the shoulders over. Look to your belly button. Moving with the breath. Inhale. Chest and gaze up. Shoulders back. Exhale to round yourself through. Inhale. Lifting up, this time you might like to bring the arms out wide. And then as we exhale, again, keep that core engaged as we round over, perhaps hugging the arms. Inhale, expanding here, lengthening out. Exhale, if we're hugging, do the opposite arm on top this time. Let's take two more rounds of our seated cat-cow. Focusing on that spinal movement and that opening through the chest. Got one more here. We're going to inhale to bring the torso back up nice and tall, so lifting up through the crown. As we exhale, we're going to place our hands behind us. And we're going to bring our feet out wider than our yoga mat. So I'm just going to remove my rolled up towel now. You can keep yours under there if you need though. So fingertips are facing forward towards your feet. Our feet are wider than our hips. Like I said, a good distance is as wide as the mat. We're going to inhale, lifting our chest so shoulders are back. And as we exhale, we're going to drop both of our knees over to the right side. So we're keeping our right sit bone grounded. The left one lifts. We're dropping the knees down, gently twisting through the spine here. We're going to hold this for five breaths. Now, if you're on a chair, you can do the same thing, but instead you're going to cross one leg over. So crossing your left leg over your right. And then just dropping both knees to one side. So that's your chair option. Breathing into wherever you're feeling the tension. Feeling a bit of a stretch through the shoulders too. We'll take two more breaths here. And then we inhale, bring the legs back to center. Uncross them if you're in a chair. Exhale, perhaps crossing other leg over now or just dropping the knees to the side, to that left side. Now let the right hip lift, stretching into that right shoulder. You can glance over that shoulder if you would like to. Breathing wherever that tension is. Three. Four. Five, inhale, come back to center, lift that chest. And as we exhale, you're going to either uncross your legs if you're in a chair or cross them if you're seated. And we're going to just take a few circles of the wrists here. Exhale, reversing the direction. And even if you didn't have weight on your wrists there, if you are seated in a chair, it's always a good idea. Give them a little bit of extra love. They get used a lot without a lot of love. 
Beautiful. From here, we're going to come up and over into a tabletop position. So if you're in a chair, you're going to join us on all fours, on the ground, on a mat, whatever suits you. Now, if this hurts the knees, I understand we might be on tiles at home. You can grab your towel again and you can have it rolled up. You can have it flat. But you can pop it underneath the knees for a little bit of extra support, a little bit of extra cushioning. Beautiful. So we want to stack our joints, have our knees underneath our hips, our wrists underneath our shoulders here. I'm going to stretch the shoulders out with a move we call threading the needle. So we're going to inhale to extend our right arm to the ceiling. The gaze follows. So opening to the side. As we exhale, we take this right hand under and we thread it underneath the left underarm. So our right shoulder comes down onto the mat or onto the ground, followed by our right ear. Our palm is facing upwards. Our hips are high. And we want to make sure we're resting the weight in the shoulder, not in the neck here. So you can use that left hand to push in just to support. Or if you'd like to deepen the stretch, you can take that left hand behind your back. So binding here. Still engaging the core. Three. Four. Five. If you have that bind on inhale, you're going to reach that left arm up. We're going to exhale to place it back down on the mat. Inhale, push the left hand into the mat. Lift the right arm up, gazing up. And then exhale, placing that right hand back down. Inhale, lengthen out through the crown, draw that core in. Exhale, make sure those fingers are spread nice and wide. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, thread it underneath. So placing that shoulder down, then the ear. So remember the hand is going to be facing up, make sure. You're not putting tension in the neck. Getting yourself into a relatively comfortable position, hips high. And then taking the bind, if it's an option, different sides might want different things. And we'll be here for three. Focus breath into the tension, four. Five. If you've got that bind, you're going to inhale, lift the right hand up. Exhale, placing it down on the mat. Inhale, push the right hand down, lift the left arm up. And then we're going to exhale, gently placing that left hand down. Beautiful. We're going to tuck our toes, bring our knees in together. I know we're focusing on necks and shoulders, but doesn't mean we can't work other things. So we're going to inhale just to sit the weight back into our heels. We're coming into our toe squat. So we just want to make sure we've tucked all of our toes under. Sometimes the little pinky toe can get left out. So we're sitting the weight back on our heels, stretching out through the toes. We're going to inhale, reach those arms up, take a bind with our fingers. We're going to exhale to place that on the lower part of our head so our thumbs are going down our neck for support. We're going to inhale, lift our chest, our gaze, bring the elbows wide, staying here for five breaths. So opening up through the heart space, elbows are wide, stretching the shoulders, gazing up three Four, five, we'll take an inhale here and then as we exhale keep that core engaged we're going to round the shoulders over bring the gaze to your belly button and draw the elbows in towards each other so stretching the back of the shoulders here two three Four, five, 
Inhale to straighten back up, lift the arms up. And we're going to exhale to come back to tabletop. So untuck those toes, give the feet a little bit of a patter. Releasing those toes, small movement, but uh, an effective one. Beautiful. From here, stretching our arms out. So again, our hips stay nice and high like they did for threading the needle. Stretching those arms up, we inhale, look between the fingertips, draw our core in. As we exhale, we're sinking chest and chin, keep that gaze between the fingertips. The elbows might come down, we're coming into puppy pose. So chest and chin towards the mat first, hips high. The core is engaged, breathing into our shoulder blades here. Three. Four, five, inhale, push back into the hands, walk them underneath our hips. And we're going to exhale to take our knees out as wide as the mat, the feet are together, so sinking back into child's pose. Forehead down, if it doesn't quite reach the mat, you can grab that towel. If this is not available to you, you can come back onto the chair now, round yourself over your thighs, relax the forehead to the knees, and just take a couple of nice deep belly breaths here, let the ribs expand, checking in with our body, taking two more breaths here, the weight sink back into your heels, Lengthening through the crown of the head. We're going to inhale, pushing back up into our hands. Now bring those knees together. And as we exhale, take the feet out to one side so we can just bring the sit bones down, coming to a seated position. We're coming back to cross-legged here. So again, you can take that towel underneath the sit bones. You can sit back on your chair. We're going to inhale, reach those arms up. Exhale, take the hands behind us. So taking a bind with our fingers. Inhale, roll the shoulders back, lift the chest and chin up. And then exhale, release that grip. Fingertips come back down to the mat. We inhale, reaching up again. Look to your hands. We're going to exhale, Anjali Mudra. Closing the eyes down, gently bowing the head towards the hands. We're going to stay here for a few moments, finding a seated Shavasana. If it's more comfortable for you, you're more than welcome to come to lying on the ground, it's totally up to you. Wherever we are, whatever position we take, though, we're going to close the eyes down. Softening breath and body. Letting whatever part of us is connected to the earth to sink a little bit deeper. Releasing tension with each exhale. Starting to bring our awareness back to our surroundings. 
coming back to the here and now, still keeping the eyes closed. If you're lying down, maybe inviting some gentle movement back into the body. We're not here already. Eventually, we're going to slowly make our way back to seated. And then once you've arrived on the mat or on your chair in a comfortable seated position, we're going to inhale, take the arms wide, bring the palms to meet overhead. And then exhaling, hands back down to Anjali Mudra, this time gently blinking the eyes open. Thank you all so much for joining me for our short practice. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you got a little bit of a release and just got to have some time away from the outside world with yourself. Namaste.